Hey guys, Samuel the Aviator here. I'm finally back with another video. And the subject of today's video is probably something y'all have been hearing a lot about. And yeah, I'm just here to explain a little bit about uh, the Piper Wingspar AD that was just released. This is the inspection for cracks um, in the bolt holes, not the corrosion. So just to clear that up real quick. And I'm also going to be um, looking through my logbooks with you guys and show you if my plane uh, qualifies for the inspection. All right, let's get into it. All right, one quick thing I wanted to mention before I get started is uh, my microphone that I often use that has a windsock is broken and I couldn't find my lavalier microphone. So the audio quality on this video might not be the best. It's a little bit windy. Uh, again, I'm sorry about that guys and I will have it fixed in the next video. All right, so back in 1987, I believe it was a Piper Cherokee, was a oil pipeline patrol, I think, uh, pipeline inspection, something like that. Uh, I think it was down in Texas, was flying and they had a wing separation incident uh, from their aircraft. So during inspection, the FAA found that there was in fact a crack in the wing spar, fatigue cracking, and that caused the wing spar to separate from the aircraft. Uh, they released a AD 37 days after the accident. And in that AD, what it was, is a, in a nutshell, was you basically had to pull the wings off the aircraft and inspect your wing spar. Again, I might be wrong, but I believe that was about the only way to um, comply with that AD. So it was obviously very costly to pull wings off of planes. And in, I believe it was six months after that, that they released AD, they actually rescinded that AD. With the release of that AD, Piper released Service Bulletin 997, um, basically telling people how to remove the wings and do the inspection, so put the wings back on. And then after Piper rescinded that AD, Piper came out with Service Bulletin 886, and to comply with that took uh, 16 hours of labor to remove the wings and inspect. So you can imagine there was a tremendous cost associated with each aircraft and each inspection. So all of this happened back in 1987. Fast forward 30 or 40 years to 2016. I'm sure everybody's heard this story. A student pilot, well not a student pilot, but a, a pilot was on his commercial check ride with a seasoned DPE, uh, airline transfer pilot rated DPE, I believe. And they were doing some touch and goes. They took off from the runway, climbed a few hundred feet, and aircraft's wings separated from the aircraft which caused them to crash. Unfortunately, both of them lost their lives. That's the crash that most of us are most familiar with, and we probably heard it over and over. FA investigated that crash, and they found that it was metal fatigue cracking in the wing spar. The FAA then released a notice of, notice of proposed rulemaking about eight months after that accident, and 20,000 Piper aircrafts were affected by this AD, which is astronomical. Um, the final AD went into effect, I believe this February, if I'm not mistaken, um, and the list of aircraft that qualify are now down to about 10,000. So Piper uses just one wing spar that runs through the center and that's connected to like bulkheads and stringers and everything that's comprised to make up the wing. And then the wing has obviously sheet metal over it to create the shape of the wing. So the wing spar cracks in the bolt holes, I believe the inboard ones, the closest to the spar carry through box. Um, and it makes sense because there's not a lot of surface there, but the wing, the spar actually cracks in the bolt holes. So what you have to do is pull, there's some panels on the bottom of the wing and you might have to get through it um, through the center here as well, like in the aircraft. Uh, what you do is you pull out two, I think it's two bolts from each side um, and you run a eddy current test on that, which I'm not gonna talk a bunch about that. Uh, the SoCal Flying Monkey, if you guys have seen his channel, has a great video on that. I'll link it below my video where he does his eddy current test and basically shows you guys what that does. Uh, and he explains it great. I'm sure I could do no better of a job. I'd probably be much worse. So check that video out if you wanna know how the eddy current test works. But basically you have to do that eddy current test. So the FAA says, for the AD, they estimate it's gonna cost about $255 to review the logbooks and figure out if your aircraft actually applies for the AD, and then another uh, 1200 bucks, I believe, 
to comply with the AD um, doing any current test. And I've seen anywhere from like a thousand to two thousand dollars to actually do that in real life. And FAA says if you fail that, um, then basically you're dead in the water. They said there's no way to calculate the cost of it. And from what I've seen, you'd have to buy a used wing, strip it, and replace your wing with it. And then obviously you'd have to paint it and make sure everything's properly rigged. So it'd be a lot of work. Not to mention that wings prices are skyrocketing on the Cherokee models because of this AD. So if there's a good chance if your spar it fails, your plane might be grounded. To make matters worse, which I completely understand and makes sense from a safety standpoint, the FAA says they will not grant ferry permits to aircraft that fail the wing spar eddy current test. So your plane has to sit there and either be taken apart or fixed at the airport that it's at. You cannot fly it. Um, so yeah, definitely a big blow um, to all the Piper faithful and everyone who owns Piper Cherokee aircraft. And it's, yeah, it's not a great situation all around. One thing I will mention is for over the course of like 70 years to only have two fail is honestly a pretty decent safety record in my opinion. So I don't think you have to be freaked out that your spar is going to crash, even if it had a very small crack that, you know, they don't notice till the eddy current test. Just my opinion, I doubt, you know, that it's going to have a, uh, an incident, but it's very possible that it could as well. So the FAA says to figure out if your aircraft is actually applicable to that AD, you have to figure out what they call the factor time in service. And 5,000 hours factor time in service is what counts. Basically, all that, it's a mathematical formula, I'll throw it up here, basically all that's um, needed in that is your your time in service, your aircraft total time, and the number of 100 hour inspections. So that's all that you need and they figure different things out based on that and they come up with your factor time in service. Basically if you have a lot of 100 hour inspections, even if your total time is below 5,000 hours, you might need the um, to get the eddy current done. And the reason they do that is because aircraft that have been flown in flight training environments and commercially have been used and abused and um, ridden really hard. So those are most likely to have the spar cracks. So even if your plane, to my understanding, I haven't played with this too much, but if your plane has over 5,000 hours time in service, but no 100 hour inspections, you um, don't need the AD to comply with the AD. Now I'd have to uh, work that formula a little bit to see, but I believe that's how it works. All right, so I have my aircraft logbooks in front of me, and what I'm gonna do is go through the airframe logs and see how many 100 hour inspections my aircraft has had, and then I'm gonna also look at the aircraft total time, and then we're gonna do uh, the calculation real quick and figure out if we need to comply with this AD. So here's the first original Piper log as you can see it's pretty old and torn up and again my apologies it's a little bit windy out here but it is a very nice evening So here's the first 100 hour inspection, and this is after it was brand new. There was a 50 hour and 100 hour, so I assume it's just engine maintenance. Um, but I'm gonna count it just to be on the safe side.
So it looks like this aircraft has had 400 hour inspections done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run through the uh, formula real quick and figure out what our factor time in service is. And actually one thing I forgot to look at is the total time of the aircraft. So I'm going to glance at that real quick as well. Total time, airframe 4872. Um, so we can make it just 5,000 to keep things simple. It's probably got uh, close to that. Alright guys, that's all I have for today's video. If you found it helpful, please be sure to smash the like button for me. Also comment down below. Um, let me know if your aircraft needs the wing spar AD uh, or if you've already done it and if it passed or not. And also if you feel like it, please let me know how much it cost. I would, yeah, I would appreciate that and I love hearing from everybody. Also if you have not done it yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. It's the little red button below this video. Um, I love to see all my subscribers and connect with them. And if you're subscribed, you get to see all of my new videos. All right, guys, that's it. Have a good one.